Oh my goodness, I have failed this derivation like four times, but we're gonna do some math here real quick. We're gonna be deriving the moment of inertia for a hollow sphere. Oh my gosh. This is like fifth take now, my God. Anyways, so this is probably the hardest derivation I've done. Uh, I know it's kind of sad. I know it's so easy. Oh, it's so trivial, whatever. So this is a hollow sphere. So there's space inside. That's what hollow means, but basically, the mass is uniformly distributed throughout the volume of this shell, okay? <laughs> That's what it is. So it has a density of rho, total mass of m, um, thickness t, and a radius of r. So I'm not going to be doing a triple integral for this. I'm going to be doing a single integral, an interesting method. So that being said, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take the differential moment of inertia of this thing and then integrate once to get the whole thing. So the differential region I'm gonna be splitting this up to are hoops, okay? So first and foremost, di is equal to, for a hoop, the moment of inertia is m r squared, but it's differential region, so dm, and r squared, so radius is x and then squared. But what is dm? direct message just kidding anyway so because the mass is uniformly distributed for this thing and rho is not a function this identity holds so dm over dv oh imagine if the mass wasn't uniformly distributed oh you'd have to do two integrals integrate dm oh my god oh anyways so dm is going to be rho times dv but what is dv so <clears throat> excuse me before I perform this multiplication, before I multiply by dv, I am first going to tell you what dv is. So this is a little bit hard to wrap your head around, up, but since we're breaking this up into hoops, it's going to look something like this, right? Try my best here. It's going to look like a funion, okay? Or a roller coaster. If you're from Singapore, favorite snack. Anyway, so this is x and it has a height of dy. And one thing is if you chop this hoop right here, if you chop a hoop and then turn it out like this, it's just gonna become a regular rectangular prism. So it's gonna become like this. Uh, yeah. Right? So uh, let's make this side the curved side. So this is actually the side of the circle. So that's curved. So that's like here. Okay. So this long length right here, it was originally a circle. So that means the length around the perimeter of this thing is the right circumference. So this is going to be two pi times the radius X. And another thing is that this is T because it has a thickness of T and that is part of the original thing. The thickness of this differential region is a constant. It's the same thing for each differential region because the whole sphere has uniform thickness. Okay, so this is dy. Now, the reason why I drew a curve is because if you call this angle right here d theta dy is really just arc length. So dy, since we're considering a differential arc length, is just r d theta. Since the arc belongs to the whole circle, this is the regular r, the constant r, the radius of the circle. So this becomes r d theta. Oof. So what is the volume of this thing? dv is going to be since it's a normal prism, we just multiply everything, right? So this becomes two pi x r d theta t. Okay, so if I'm gonna bring these equations right here, let's multiply over here real quick. Rho dv, ooh, what is that? Uh, equals dm. So that means dm is just rho times dv, right? So it's two pi rho x r d theta t. Okay, so, I'm gonna gather what we have, and then we're gonna plug and chug everything in. So, 
That being said, we now have an equation for dm. So di is equal to, I'm going to put the x squared up front first, x squared times 2 pi rho x r d theta t. So let's collect like terms here. So di is equal to just 2 pi rho x cubed r d theta t. And now I'm going to perform an interval. So integrating this side with respect to i is just i. So i becomes the integral. We're going to be going from 0 to r. I'll explain this a little bit more. Actually, no, before I skip steps here. Negative r to r. So integrating from here to here of 2 pi rho x squared r d theta t. Uh, the t is out of the integral, whatever, it's a constant. So I'm going to pull out all the constants here. So 2 pi rho, uh, r is a constant, r, and then we also have t. And then integral going from 0, <laughs> I'm so used to doing integrals from 0 to something, of negative r to r of x cubed d theta. We have a problem. So we have a function that doesn't have theta in it and we're taking the integral with respect to theta. You can't do that, okay? So what are we gonna do here? If I call this angle here big theta, regular uh, theta, then this is also gonna be x, right? Um, it's not the entire way this is gonna be x. What do you know? We have a triangle right there. So by regular trig, we have cosine of theta is equal to adjacent, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is r. So r cosine theta is equal to x. So I can plug that in here. Our i is equal to 2 pi rho rt, integral going from negative r to r of r cosine theta cubed d theta. So if I cube everything in here and then I pull the r cube out of the integral, we have i is equal to 2 pi rho, so r times r cubed is r to the fourth times t, integral from negative r to r. Whoa, just kidding, not anymore. So we changed the variable that we're taking the integral with respect to. So now our integral is going to be from 0 to 2 pi. Symmetry regions, I'll explain in a second. So 0 to 2 pi of cosine cubed theta d theta. Okay, so why did I choose my limits of integration to be like this? So if I redraw my circle right here, it's not that bad. Phew, I thought it was going to be a really bad circle. But basically, if you integrate from 0 to 2 pi over 2, you're going to be adding up the differential regions from 0 to pi over 2. So we're going to be adding this, 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 this. Now, you notice that's only half the circle. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to multiply the whole thing by 2. So we can take care of all that other stuff, right? So this becomes 2 times 2, 4. Okay? Now, we can do our integral. So... I am going to get rid of all this stuff, and then we're going to proceed with the derivation. This is so exciting. I've never gotten this far in all of my takes, so this is pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Okay. So our i is equal to 4 pi rho r to the 4th times t integral from 0 to pi over 2. Get the hell. Okay. Our givens can get out the way. Uh, cosine cubed of theta d theta, okay? Oh my goodness, yes. So integrating this is actually not too bad. I did integration by parts in this for no reason, but whatever. I'll teach you how to do it right now if you haven't seen my Instagram video at the Asian Jose link to my Instagram in the description. But okay, uh, if you will agree with me, that cosine cube of theta can be rewritten as cosine squared times cosine. So this is cosine squared of theta, cosine of theta, d theta. 
And whoa, what do you know? I took pre-cal, just kidding. I didn't take pre-cal, but cosine of theta plus sine squared of theta is equal to one. <gasps> Identity we all know. So multiplying, not multiplying, subtracting <laughs> sine squared of theta from both sides means we can substitute in this for that. So I'm gonna go try and go quickly now because this is really trivial stuff. Uh, so this can be written as one minus sine squared of theta cosine of theta d theta. Now, u sub, let u be equal to sine of theta. Differentiating u is just du, and differentiating sine of theta is going to be cosine of theta d theta. So, we can plug in everything. So, i is equal to 4 pi rho r fourth t, integral from 0 to pi over 2 of uh, 1 minus u squared times cosine theta d theta is du, du, right? Because sine squared is u squared, and then cosine theta is just du. Anyway, so, oh my god, power rule. So, this becomes 4 pi rho r to the 4th t, so u minus u cubed over 3, uh, evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. We're in the U world, <laughs> black pen, red pen reference, and then we need a plug in uh, for U. So that was our sine, right? Or pi rho r to the fourth times t of sine of theta minus sine cubed of theta over three evaluated from zero to pi over two. If you plug in zero to both of those, sine is gonna be zero, so that whole thing goes away. Sine of pi over two is just one, so we have four pi rho r to the fourth t. One minus, well, one cubed is just one, so this is gonna be one over three. Uh, fractions. So i is equal to four pi r to the fourth t times two thirds. So <clears throat> I'm going to be resubstituting in for rho and for t. So what is rho? Since I said the mass was uniformly distributed, it's just gonna be the total mass over the volume. <coughs> what is the volume? So the volume of this thing. So it's a hollow sphere. If you're thinking I was gonna do two volumes, subtract them to get the outer shell, I'm not gonna be doing that. So I'm gonna be doing a cool trick. So in geometry, you probably haven't learned this, but if you have a shell, you just get the surface area and multiply it by the thickness, and then you get our, the volume of the shell. But basically, if you have a rectangular plane or whatever, uh, okay, if you have a shell <clears throat> and then you chop it down the middle and you fold it out, it becomes a sheet. So it becomes a sheet with some thickness. So it's gonna be the surface area of the sheet which was the surface area of a sphere, which is just four pi r squared times its thickness, t. Verify on some other channel with that, but basically that is what I'm gonna be using for the volume of this thing. So four pi r squared t. So i is equal to four pi, now rho is this, so this is m over four pi r squared t, r to the fourth t times two thirds. This is completely messy right now, but this is the beauty, the beautiful thing. Oh my gosh, so four pi is gonna cancel out, not equal to zero, r squared, gonna cancel out. This is just gonna become a two, and then the t's are gonna cancel. So the moment of inertia for a hollow sphere is nothing other than two thirds m r squared, and we are done, oh my gosh. Oh, that took so long. But yeah, I literally took like five takes on that, guys. So oh, please appreciate my hard work. This is really hard for a stats boy to do so much calculus. Anyways, <clears throat> if you enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, comment, whatever, share, blah, 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 hate me, uh, call me a nerd, etc., so on and so forth. But if you did find this cool, even if you're not in physics, more power to you. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that is the moment of inertia for a hollow sphere, and uh, 
that concludes my suffering, my goodness. Peace.